seems like everyone's using it. But what do we know about it, really? We know that we can talk to it, we have conversations with it about almost anything, and it's really smart. We know the thing can make pictures, and with the right kinds of inputs, the pictures can be beautiful. And we know the systems have started to demonstrate creativity even beyond humans, as was shown by AlphaGo and its games against Lisa Dull. And we know that it's accelerating the speed of science. Not too long ago, it would take a PhD student years to infer the shape of a protein. But today, now with the help of AI, all 200 million known proteins have had their shapes discovered. And that's just what we can do today. On the horizon are other and many unbelievable breakthroughs just waiting to happen. I use machine learning to automatically create rich digital representations of the built environment. We start with reality capture, a kind of imaging, and we automatically identify components for modeling. And these models can be used to inform anyone that works with buildings. But how is all of this accomplished? My goal over the next few minutes is to give you an intuition about how these systems work. And to do that, I'm going to use some of your real estate knowledge to explain two key concepts. Let's begin with something familiar, comparable sales. It's an analysis in real estate, often called comps. It's a method used to estimate the value of a property by comparing it to similar properties. We identify properties that are similar in size, location, condition, and so on. And the sale prices of these comps are then analyzed to determine a fair market value for the property in question. So let's focus on these two key concepts, features and similarity. Features are important for comps because they are how we describe and represent properties. Location, size, age, number of bedrooms, what happens when we include a feature? What happens if you remove or ignore a feature? The whole analysis changes. And much like comps, deciding what features to use to describe things is central to machine learning. How we assess similarity is also important for comps. For something like location, how close do two properties need to be in order to be considered similar? How about something like architectural style? How do we evaluate similarity there? How do we decide what differences are important and which are irrelevant, which need to be adjusted for and which can be ignored? And much like comps, methods for assessing similarity of things is central to machine learning. So features in the context of machine learning. Features are digital building blocks. They are what we use in order to build digital representations of things in the real world. We use them to represent properties, in comps, but in machine learning, we use them to represent everything. In machine learning, the task of deciding what features to use and which not to use to represent something is called feature engineering. When a feature is used to represent something, that value or category describes a position in a feature space. Here we see a feature space with two dimensions because two features were used to describe the thing. But if we use, for example, 20 features, this feature space would have 20 dimensions. Well, that would be harder to visualize. Feature spaces in machine learning can have dozens, hundreds, or even thousands of dimensions. The power of this feature space is that it encodes real world relationships as geometric relationships. And in this feature space, similarity is proximity. So if we have two things, we describe them using features, 
and they fall close together in the feature space, we know they are more similar than if those two objects were to fall further apart in the feature space. And so feature engineering is a design process. We design the space in which we operate and where it is most simple to make decisions. Depending on what features we include, we might push things together, making them seem more similar, or we might pull things apart and make them appear less similar. And so with each feature, we bring things together or pull them apart. Returning to comparable sales, Let's, uh, let's talk about similarity and making comparability determinations. We have a property and we are estimating the value of that property. We have described the property using features and those features have allowed us to place the property in our feature space. We take the other properties in our data set and we also describe those properties using the same features. This allows us to bring all these other properties into the same feature space. Now we want to compare this one property with all of the other properties so that we can uh, estimate the value. So to do this, we draw a boundary within the feature space. In machine learning, this boundary is called a classifier. In this case, we just draw a circle with some radius and all properties inside of the circle are considered comps and all, everything outside is ignored going forward. Another approach might be to find natural groupings based on the distribution of points within the feature space. Here, we've identified three groups. There is yellow, blue, and red. And all properties in the red group are considered comps and all properties in yellow and blue are ignored going forward. Now that we've identified the comps, uh, we transfer the sale prices of these comps to our property of interest. We do this using regression, which applies all necessary adjustments. So we see that because of the patterns of pricing in the feature space, the analysis sets the value of our property at 654K. Of course, machine learning operates in many different domains. If, for example, we're creating a system for monitoring the use of construction equipment on a project, we would go through very similar steps. We transform things in the real world into a feature space. We draw boundaries within the feature space that allow us to produce desired outputs. In this case, it allows us to identify the position of the excavator in our images or video by asking, is this object similar in color to other excavators we have seen? AI has been doing things that are unbelievable. These advancements would not be possible without deep learning, big data, high performance computing, but under the hood, it is all about features and similarity. When dealing with chatbots, their representation of language exists within a feature space and conversation is like traveling through that feature space. When recognizing things in images and videos, these objects are represented in a visual feature space and making decisions on what things are relies on deciding. Is this thing that I am looking at similar to something I have seen in the past? And so machine learning is like operating in a galaxy of concepts where real world relationships are geometric relationships, where similarity is proximity. And so it's the work of ML engineers to take these galaxies and to use clever ways to disentangle them pushing things together and pulling things apart. So drawing useful boundaries, creating these classifiers and making similarity assessments can become easier. 
So in my own work, the process is no different. We take some representation of the world, we transform it into a useful feature space. We're drawing boundaries around all the building system component categories like walls and doors and windows allows us to automate the recognition of building objects. At a fundamental level, these are the steps we are using to help digitize and model your buildings. And so I hope that having an understanding of uh, features, similarity, and the role they play within machine learning, you can make more informed decisions around uh, selecting technology and using technology.